Hey there. Uh, so this is my 1990 NA Miata that has a J35A4. I wanted to make this video to give a little bit of an overview of the entire build, the story behind it, what went into it, and how much fun it's been. So the chassis of the build originally had a 1.6 four-cylinder iron block making like, I don't know, 87 horsepower to the crank. Well, when I got the car, it had a big old hole in it. And honestly, if anybody else got the car, they're probably just going to part it out. The whole thing was pretty clapped. Uh, not a great project to put a whole new engine in, I'll tell you that. So once I yeeted that four-cylinder out and threw it in the garbage, as where all 1.6s belong, uh, I figured it was time to double that and, you know, give it some VTEC, yo. Now, I'd say it's all fine and dandy to slap a new motor in a car that's got a blown up motor but where are you going to get that motor to slap in that car with a bad motor when you have no motor well it turns out uh my brother was driving my mom's 2004 honda odyssey and you see where this is going home from work after a long night shift now unfortunately he uh flipped it over rolled it over wasn't in good shape fortunately though he was just fine it was a low speed event you know you're tired, it happens, so unfortunate end of the life to the amazing minivan. A decision was made to buy it back from the tow yard that towed it to the tow yard. Oh yeah, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Is she gonna start? Oh yeah. Of course, cause it's a Honda, it fires right up. So that was a, a whopping $300. Did a real professional job taking the motor out. Did I get it out? So now it was actually time to begin the swap uh, earlier this year in February using Oz Engineering's swap kit and Minitex ECU and harness. So the whole wiring part was pretty daunting to me, uh, but I managed to figure it out and it was way easier than I initially thought. So fortunately, the swap process actually went quite well, uh, just because I spent a lot of time on the Facebook group, researching different forums. You know, there's a lot of content out there for these, even though it's a pretty relative, uh, pretty, pretty new swap. So anyways, I managed to get the whole swap done within a month's time, you know, working full time, coming home from work, grinding on this. Dude, he's hey. In all honesty, it's not that much different from swapping in a BP just because you're keeping the stock drivetrain. It's nowhere near something like an LS swap, you know, where you have to take the whole car apart. So anyways, the stage two kit I purchased from Gary over at Oz Engineering includes the adapter plate and crankshaft extension that utilizes the stock Miata 5 speed. A 2014 Honda V6 Accord starter mounted to the lower left side and included a mounting bracket that bolts up right to the adapter plate. This did require some minor clearancing to the transmission and really left my garage full of aluminum dust. So wear your PPE, wear a mask, wear, you know, safety glasses, but get ready for a wild cleanup. So the power is transferred from the engine using a Honda B-Series type clutch setup. This uses a lightweight flywheel from ACT. Beautiful piece. This is where, you know, you want to spend some money and a custom Miata B-Series clutch that utilizes, utilizes the Miata spline for the five speed and has the diameter of the B-Series. Now you can still use a 1.8 Miata clutch if you want. There's only like a 20 millimeter difference, so you're not really losing much. And then that all comes together using a ACT heavy duty pressure plate. And included in the Oz engineering kit, there is a copper sleeve that slides over the Miata 5 speed spline and a modified throwout bearing is then slid over that. And then when you're all bolted up, bolt the trans right up and you're good to go. The only modifications to the engine included rotating the intake manifold, swapping the valve cover gaskets, and dealing with the originally mounted rear coolant manifold. One second here. Give you guys some more room to see here. Now, as you can probably just see, uh, the engine sticks just a little bit out of the hood. Now, there are ways to remedy this 
issue, but I don't really care. That's just more money and time. I had to put it in the project and I was eager beaver to get this thing going down the road. So I cut a hole in a crappy hood I have. It works, you know, and there are ways to achieve this. You can get subframe spacers, lower intake manifold solutions, uh, reroute the throttle body to the left or right side of the motor. Maybe in the future, probably not. Now, fortunately, part of the kit included Oz Engineering's coolant manifold reroute. And this is unironically the first time I've done a coolant reroute on a Miata. I've owned like 30. SMH in my head, I know. But uh, this is great because there is a ton of space in the back of the motor for your heater, core, hoses, and just, you know, activities in general, which is awesome. And as you can see, the coolant manifold comes right through to the front where there is a inline Mazir thermostat and it routes right to the original stock Miata radiator. Now, I have a cheapy eBay aluminum radiator on this, uh, just a good upgrade to do in general. So that's there. Also, I did swap the valve covers just to shorten some length and make it a little easier for the vacuum routing for the brake booster line. I just went to a Miata shell, cut up that brake booster line and spliced it together, made my own little doohickey that works pretty good. So now that the engine, oh. So now that the engine was all prepped, it was time to just throw it in the car. And honestly, it was about as easy as dropping in a stock BP. There's still a lot of room, especially with this motor being so high and actually a little shorter than the stock four cylinder. So another thing I love about the Oz kit is that it utilizes the stock Miata subframe. So you keep the stock front suspension, stock steering geometry, and there are motor mount adapters that utilize stock Miata motor mounts. So you can use, you know, aftermarket custom ones, competition pads or competition mounts rather. And there's just an adapter that bolts right up to each side of the J-Series block. Keeping the stock subframe is all made possible due to the custom oil pan that's included in the Oz kit. There is a oil pickup tube that bolts up in place of the stock one. You Honda bond the oil pan on, you're good to go. It's pretty easy. So now that the motor was in, I moved on to the wiring part. And again, this was pretty scary for me because I'm not too well equipped up here, but I made it work, so if I can do it, anybody can do it. So fortunately, it went a lot easier than I was expecting. The mini tech wiring harness and ECU worked out great for me, honestly. Um, the whole engine side of the harness just plugs in. There's proprietary connectors. It's, it's like Legos. You can't really mess it up. And then there is a flying lead that you need to wire in to the Miata harness. Now, I'm a nice guy. I made a separate YouTube video going over that for the simple minded like myself. So if you want to refer to that, if you're doing the swap yourself, have at it, it's all yours. So there's like a total of seven pins required to actually fully transfer your gauges and get this motor running. Um, there's like a 12 volt switch, 12 volt constant, your ignition switch, your fuel, fuel pump ground relay, your cooling fan ground relay. You're golden after that. You can run and drive the car, but uh, I took a few extra steps, got all my stock gauges to work. So the gauge cluster functions normally. It's great. If honestly, if you couldn't see this motor sticking out the hood, you would not think it had a V6 under it when you're cruising down the highway. So I got pretty excited. I got the motor running. I got the wiring right. And uh, after that, it was time to move on to welding the downpipes up. Now, I did do a custom downpipe on my Turbo Miata. And I thought that was bad when it came to tight clearances, but this wasn't too much fun. So I bought some cheapy eBay stainless steel exhaust piping uh, in two inch flavor. And that gave me a good amount of clearance to get past the steering rack. The driver's side was, you know, the harder part being the steering rack and uh, passenger wasn't too bad. This car originally had some busted Yanaka exhaust. The muffler was falling apart, so. Went on eBay, ordered me up a Magnaflow, Baby Flow, you know, clone, $50 muffler. Car was really nice and quiet. I like it that way. Um, it's not raspy at all. I made it like that so you can really hear that 
good, good, you know, VTech called Suck. We all know about that. <laughs> so, yeah, honestly, after finishing up the exhaust, car was running and driving. Cooling system was buttoned up. Wiring was good. Took it on a few tests and tunes. And it was just a lot of housekeeping after that. So, again, you know, I, I drove it to work a few times. I have like a 10 minute commute, so it's not bad. Did some spirited runs on the back roads, worked out a lot of kinks, you know. Took it on a road rally, took it to a track day at Summit Point, took it to a couple of drift events, as you can see by the damage up there on the last one. It is what it is. Uh, car has been a blast. It is so much fun. Makes, you know, 240 horsepower. It's not an LS, it's nothing crazy, but for me, for my driver skill level, it's plenty. You know, a lot of people ask me, when are you going to supercharge it? When are you going to throw some turbos in there? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not going to happen. really defeats the whole purpose of this swap. New location unlocked. I also sourced a newer J35A4. Same motor. For 400 bucks. 140k miles. Looks great. Pretty stoked on that. This one actually has like 225,000 miles on it. I'll admit it is a Honda. So it is burning and leaking a little bit of oil. Um, the leaking is definitely due to my negligence uh, not replacing the rear main seal when I had the motor out. So super dumb, super dumb. Ten dollar seal. It's not too bad though, leakage wise. It, it probably burns more than it leaks, and it's really not too bad. So it, it's all right. So and uh, back to that four hundred dollar price tag for a pretty minty motor. Um, that's the sad thing about Miatas. Uh, supply and demand. Spec Miata. We're now getting into like drift tax on these cars. Well, we have been for a while. Uh, parts are getting more expensive and supply is not going up. Original motors are crazy expensive now, like for a four cylinder. You know, we're talking like up to $1,500 for some cases, depending. I don't sell motors for that much. I can't, can't bring it, can't do that, man. I just can't. This is why this is just so appealing to me. How inexpensive and abundant these motors are. So if you're tired of your boring old BP, if you blew up countless ones due to turboing or other nonsense, I'm no stranger to that. Consider the J-Swap. Really, really consider the J-Swap. Now, I will say that I think a K-Series is, you know, the most true-to-heart swap you can go for these cars. It really maintains that pure four-cylinder roadster feel. I've never driven one. I've never even sat in one, but... I really think that would be the best swap, but they're just so much more money. Like the swap kits are double the wiring harnesses. You're going to pay a lot more from K power industries. Yeah, they have some quality stuff, but this is just so much more easier. And what I say, and what I mean easier, I really do think it makes more sense on paper. So the swap process is a lot cheaper. You get way more torque and a little bit more power. Now, the aftermarket is not as great for J-Series, but if you're doing the swap and only shooting for 250 horsepower, you don't need much aftermarket support. And lastly, the weight difference is actually pretty negligible. Now, my research varies, but I think this weighs like 40 pounds more than a K. 40 pounds? Like, come on, man. That, that, I deleted my AC, no power steering, so honestly, I'm just going to call it a wash. All right, this is about the same weight as a K-Series. So yeah, K-series swaps are great. I think they're super cool. And you really get what you pay for. You know, they've been around for a while. Pretty pretty good swaps. And you're just going to pay more. That's how it is. But no hate. No hate to that. I would love a K-swap. The shell I was going to swap this motor into, I might do that. I don't know. You know, it's just all about the time. It takes so much time. And of course, when I was referring to an LS swap or, you know, Ford 302, which I had a Ford 302, um you have to take the whole car apart you know it's not just the engine you have to severely modify the subframe or get a new one different trans totally different clutch setup different rear end all the fab work back there the hubs the axles it's so much more it's so much more it's so much more cooler right right i think it's a lot cooler um but the monetary difference you know the price per horsepower comparison uh, I think you're getting a little bit more of a bargain with the J-Series. Now, call me a little crazy, but I really enjoy the J-Swap a lot more than my old 302 Miata I had. Now, I did not build that car. My whole idea was 
buy one already built so i don't have to spend an outrageous amount of time and money actually building it myself i had a good time with the car i made a little money on it it was a fun time but this car feels a lot more agile a lot more responsive and it's not fair to compare this to an old 302 i'm sure an ls would feel just as nimble but i did not want to spend ls money and when it comes to ls power that's way too much for my driver mod lacking ass like i shoot i already crashed this thing drifting with 240 horsepower could you imagine way north of 300 hell no so with all that said when we're talking about price to performance how much did i actually spend so i just kind of valued this car including the torsen at 500 bucks which i know it's really good deal it's not fair but this chassis is a little collapsed the floorboard frame rail supports are all caved in as they go it's got a little rocker rust body's not great i made it a hell of a lot worse so yeah we're calling it 500 dollars for the base price of the car all right i'm gonna fly through this list after that so 500 dollars for the base cost of the miata three thousand four hundred ninety five dollars for the oz engineering stage two kit the j35a4 that i pulled from a mom's odyssey that was free we'll value that at 200 dollars. the act flywheel 222 pressure plate 341 clutch 125 Pilot bearing was $8, starter $80. Like I said, I upgraded to the OEM. I spent $130 on the OEM. Do that instead. Don't get the Amazon special. Uh, heat sucks too much. ARP pressure plate bolts, $22 or $21. Honda Bond, $11. The Mini Tech harness and ECU, $787. That's some money, but worth it. AC delete belt, $13. Burr bits, $10.52. Valve cover gaskets, $13.19. Axle shaft seals, $30. Fuse taps, I wrote fuse tapes, 658, quarter inch to 516th, spar fittings, 522, 516th to 516th, 736, two inch exhaust eBay special piping, 66 bucks, two inch exhaust elbows, 1243, two inch flex pipes, 24, V bands 40, white pipe 23, the eBay special maybe float muffler, 4940. Clutch hydraulics kits, the XD thing, stainless steel line, highly recommend, 9472 JB Weld, 654 gold heat tape, 799 Sawzall blades, 1339 heater core hose, 1638 the Goofy uh, intake filter, 1522 O2 sensor, 24 exhaust gasket, 6 the breather filter, 557 wiring loom tape, 252 IAT sensor, 1473 tech adapter, 75 front plate mount, $12. Hard dog, double diagonal roll bar. You're not going to get ready. $200. Brand new off Craigslist. Mind you, I sat in three hours of traffic. Ran there after work. Good deal. Good deal. I know you Miata yeah, enthusiasts are fuming. Fuming. But yeah, got a good deal on that. Yeah, so that comes out to a total of $6,447, including the cost of the car and the Torsen. Not the hard top. So yeah, you subtract 500 bucks, every nut and bolt, every little thing you need, every detail. That's $5,947 is what I spent for the swap kit. So that's really it. That's all that went into Jay swapping my Miata for 240 horsepower and 240 foot pounds of torque. It's been an absolute blast. So I'm really excited to keep driving this car, keep taking it to events, just driving it to work. You know, taking it on the back roads, having a good time. And yeah, hopefully I'll make an update video sometime later this year or next on the taking out the drivetrain and doing things right. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. But yeah, tell me what y'all think. You know, would y'all do this swap in your Miata? I think it's probably the best swap you can do, but that's just me. Jay is the way.